Hi there everyone, it's really good to see you again and I hope you're well and today I've got a little box opening and review and it's something that I've been asked about for a couple of weeks now. It's a brand new model from Daypole and I've been really looking forward to this one. So without further ado, let's take a closer look shall we? This wagon has been very long awaited from Daypole, announced quite a while ago, but it's finally come through. It's the Bogey Bolster E. Now, we've already had Bogey Bolsters C and D from Backman, and we've also had a Bogey Bolster A quite some time ago, not sure if it's still in the catalogue from Hornby. Uh, but now, finally, we've got the Bogey Bolster E. E, which gives us quite a lot of variety for any trains involving, for example, carrying steel rod, steel bar, all that kind of thing. And uh, I've got a catalogue number on here, 4F-061-001. And uh, I've particularly picked this one. It's in the tops lettered version, so probably about post-1974, which for me is perfect. I really do have a soft spot for the uh, tops period. But I know quite a lot of you are more interested in other periods. So Daypol have definitely also released one in engineering livery coded in the uh, the Y group of wagons which denotes bogey engineers wagons. Now I'm going to be doing a video at some point just to try and explain uh, some of the tops lettering codes for wagons because I know that that's something which is a little bit like witchcraft for some people to get their heads around but it's quite easy believe me. But back to the wagon. It comes in um, it's it's unusual actually for me to see a Daypole wagon in this box. I'm just not used to buying a lot of Daypole wagons in Double O, but hopefully that is about to change because this wagon is certainly something pretty special. Um, I've already had a good look and uh, they've put it in the packaging in the same way around that Hattons have put uh, items like their uh, uh, Biohack snowplow and their war wells. So uh, I'm, I do wonder whether these are made in the same factory possibly not but uh, I'm sure that the, the packaging suppliers may be the same so pretty easy to actually get out of the packaging and that was one of the criticisms that uh, I always had of the Bankman wagons the bogey bolster wagons is it was very easy to accidentally damage parts of the wagon when getting it out of the packaging but what we see here if I just put the packaging to one side is we've got the wagon with uh, the actual bolsters already in place and I believe that these may come off yeah so these can be pulled off and as you can see from the wagon they can actually be repositioned in a number of different locations on the wagon but it does come with them in this default configuration now i'm not a uh, huge font of knowledge on bogey bolsters so i'm going to actually leave them in that positioning uh, just to show you here, we've got a, a bag with some additional detail parts and these include some uh, coupling drawbar hooks and also some of the stanchions to go uh, on the bolsters. And what's also quite interesting is these um, solid coupling bars and you actually get see one, two, three, four of these. So they give you a few spares, which I quite like that because these do appear to fit into a standard NEM pocket on each end. So that does mean you can add multiple different wagons from different makes into one fixed rake and I'm sure that actually a lot of you will be quite interested in that. So I'm going to put these to one side and I'm going to focus in on the wagon itself. Now there's a pretty good weight to this and um, normally with low wagons like well trolls, low max, bogey bolsters, there can be an issue with not enough weight causing them to be unreliable runners but that isn't the case with this. There is a lot of weight in there which leads me to believe that uh, if even if um, some of this uh, detail is not made of metal there is certainly some kind of 
metal bar inside. Gosh, one thing that I would say is that these uh, bolsters do seem to come apart fairly easily. Um, they are quite robust, it seems. I'm just trying to click that back into place. That really doesn't want to go. So <laughs> it's, um, no, there's some of you going, oh, that's not a good advert. It's falling apart as she's handling it. Uh, but uh, let's just uh, let's just see if we can work out how these clip back together. Um, I suspect that once you're quite happy with the location of uh, these bolsters, that a little dab of glue is probably for the best. Oops. Um, yeah, they, they do fall apart quite readily, so I would recommend that um, if you're quite happy to, find the ideal positioning for yourself and just a wee dab of glue will help hold these in position. Um, I, I wouldn't really um, put any detraction on the score for the wagon for that. Um, it does mean that you can reposition them should you show, so choose. The underframe detail on this wagon, and this is an area where actually all the manufacturers are doing really, really well. And I'm left wondering whether they do it just to sort of keep up with the Joneses. But certainly the underside of this wagon is again exquisite. We've even got the representation of the planking on the underside through the frame and colour correct as well. So we've got the brown for the wood and the black for the chassis. We've got the vacuum brake detail all in there. They're all separately applied and we've even got these uh, bars that run to the uh, bogies to give a representation of the whole vacuum braking system. In the additional bag as well, I forgot to mention, it does have uh, vacuum hoses too, which uh, you can add if you so choose. In fact, I'm also seeing three link couplings in there as well. So there's actually, they've, they've catered for everything in there. I do quite like that. Turning the wagon the right way up again, we've got uh, slimline tension lock couplings in standard NEM pockets. And again, just like the Acura scale wagons that we reviewed last, we've got fully sprung buffers. And that, I think, coupled with three link couplings are going to make these a real boon to those of you who go into uh, much more prototypical operation. Because certainly when you're shunting wagons, if they actually have usable buffers, it does make a massive difference. The lettering is very sharply applied, tampo printed on there. We've got the TOPS code BEV and we loosely break down. The B stands for the bolster wagons. The E, it's that's the actual subcategory of bolster wagons. So it's a bogey bolster E. Um, so that's where the E comes from and the V denotes that it's vacuum braked only. Um, so that's what a breakdown of that TOPS code actually means. But we've also got a lot more going on here. We've got the gross weight, tear weight, the actual wagon number. And I'm looking there, we've got a build plate on the chassis uh, sole bar. And um, I'm looking there, I can't read it with my naked eye, but I've got pretty good faith that that may well be readable under magnification. Now, I really must look up what this symbol in the centre means. I've seen it on so many different bogey bolster wagons. Uh, most notably, it's on the back in bogey bolster C. So somebody no doubt will tell me in the comments. But whatever it is, it's on there crisply. We've also got these exquisite separately applied uh, handbrake details. And uh, I'm just trying to work out whether that's in plastic or I'm not sure but they are pretty robust and these bottom truss rods as well are pretty robust and very slender. I know back in the dim and distant past these would be chunky huge plastic mouldings but none of that here on this Daypole wagon. Uh, the colour finish to me actually even though this isn't a weathered example it does look pretty good and uh, in terms of the aesthetics on the eye in model form, it actually really does look the part. Um, I wouldn't say that there's any colours on this that look out of place. It's got uh, metal wheels with these slightly dished uh, three hole uh, faced wheels and actually they look really good. The way that they're dished like that actually makes them look really, really good. 
and uh, even though the flat face is flat on the back and it's something that I've criticized other wagons from other manufacturers for, with this Daypool have captured the dished look of the front faces perfectly and it actually looks right so that's a big big plus point in my book. The bogies as well are really nicely done. They're molded out of plastic, but they are pretty robust. They're screwed on with a, a Phillips screw in the middle and pretty free rotating. And uh, well, overall, apart from the, the detailed parts here, which seem determined to parachute off, I think we've got um, a good 9.2. Two, I'm going to give it out of 10. Um, I know I said I wouldn't uh, detract it for the bits of detail that fall off, but <laughs> they very quickly got a bit tiresome, but you can easily fix that with a dab of glue. Other areas which might fall into a little bit of criticism, um, I don't know. The couplings themselves, the way that they're mounted, the actual shanks there do look very chunky, but that is something that does afflict an awful lot of other wagons. In fact, overall, I think this is a really good package. It is a tad on the expensive side, but it does feel like you're getting value for money. Well, I hope that's been really informative to you. Don't forget to like this video and also share it too. Let other people know about this. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. It's been great to have your company and I hope to see you again next time. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.